Um, all right. Um, hi, everyone. Um, so uh, today we're going to talk about um, uh, research that we've done on a Chrome extension. Um, we we researched the threat landscape and the, the Chrome extension anatomy, and uh, we created the models to detect malicious Chrome, Chrome extensions. Um, so we are going to talk about the, the whole process that we've done from uh, looking at the threat landscape and uh, to train a, a model that uh, can detect uh, malicious uh, extensions. Uh, actually, we are threat researchers. Uh, we've used, uh, we, we consulted with, uh, with our data scientist, uh, Jonathan, which is uh, sitting here. Um, so thanks for Jonathan. Um, so um, I'm Tal. I'm uh, working at uh, Deep Instinct for uh, the past two and a half years. Uh, prior to Deep Instinct, I've been serving in the IDF for uh, seven years. Yeah, hi guys. I'm Roy. Um, I've been working with Tal for the last two years, and uh, previously I worked in uh, additional uh, security companies and also in the IDF intelligence as well. So um, the agenda for today. Uh, so first, we're going to talk about uh, some background uh, about uh, browser extensions and why we decided to uh, to work on Chrome extensions specifically. Uh, after that, we'll talk about the threat landscape and we will show some example of attacks that have been done using a Chrome extension. Um, and then we will uh, talk about the collection of the data and the creation of the data sets, uh, the sourcing of the data, and the ground tools that uh, we were able to set in order to, um, to valid, the, valid the, the data. And uh, after that, we will talk about the model uh, that we created, and uh, we will show some uh, three models that uh, we tried, and uh, we'll show the results and uh, the process that we've done. All right, so let's quickly talk about browser extensions. Uh, first of all, what are browser extensions? I mean, uh, if we look at you know the Wikipedia definition, we'll see it's a small software module uh, customizing a web browser. Basically, uh, whatever we need to do to uh, add functionalities to our browsers, uh, add uh, advanced uh, features we would like to have. And um, um, other than that, we see a trend today of uh, much more services and companies um, turning to uh, web-based products, and we see that our, uh, today the browser extensions are exposed to much more sensitive data than before, uh, which obviously makes it an attractive uh, threat, uh, attack surface for hackers and attackers. So uh, why specifically Chrome? Well, basically, Chrome is the most common uh, browser of them all. Uh, with uh, controlling over 65% of the market, as well as other browsers who also support Chrome uh, extensions, such as uh, Edge, the new Edge browser, and Opera, uh, which are all um, based on the Chromium project. Other than that, we can see uh, a Cisco report from 2016, which uh, mentioned that um, Chrome extensions are one of the most prevalent um, th sources for data leakage in enterprises, uh, mostly due to the fact that they, they are um, undetected for long periods of time. Uh, this is just a small graph to describe the uh, Chrome versus uh, additional browsers, as you can see from rules. All right. So um, there are some uh, features, like built-in features in Chrome that makes it uh, attractive uh, for uh, attackers. Uh, so first, it, uh, the extension can be installed uh, through developer mode. Uh, so after uh, um, uh, applying the uh, switching to developer mode the browser, uh, it's, uh, it's possible to install uh, extensions not uh, through the Chrome Web Store only, but also uh, manually, for example, by uh, social engineering the user, or uh, with the, the uh, flag, which is called the minus minus load extension, that can be passed to Chrome.exe. Uh, another uh, feature is uh, ignorance of uh, HTTPS. So uh, in case uh, this flag is turned on, um, if a user surfing to a website that has invalid certificate, um, the, like the default uh, message of uh, 
un, in, uh, unva invalid uh, certificate is not shown to the user. Um, uh, last uh, feature is uh, like uh, it's not a feature, but uh, it's by design. Like uh, an extension um, can uh, look at fields, uh, sen sensitive fields like password fields or credit card fields, without uh, the need of special permission to be declared. Um, that's it. So um, now we will talk a bit about uh, the anatomy of a uh, Chrome extension. Uh, so first, Chrome extension uh, has uh, the file type .crx. So from now on, we'll uh, mention uh, CRX as Chrome extension. Uh, so the CRX is actually a zip file, an archive file, uh, which is built as follows. Uh, so first, there is the manifest file, uh, which is a JSON file that uh, describes uh, the most important things about the file, such as uh, the permission uh, that the extension requires, uh, resources it uses, uh, metadata such as name, ID, and stuff like that. Uh, background script. Uh, background script is uh, like the main script, uh, which is JavaScript, of the extension. Uh, this script uh, holding the state of the extension and every event that occur. Uh, so the background script is notified and decides what to do. Uh, for example, it can trigger uh, another content script. Uh, so now I'll talk about the content scripts. Content scripts are scripts that uh, are made uh, for particular web pages. Uh, it has full access to the full JavaScript API in contrast to the uh, background script that does not have full access. Um, and it's used uh, to manipulate, uh, as I said, uh, particular uh, web pages. Uh, Last uh, component is just uh, general resources that are in use uh, in every extension, such as uh, HTML or CSS files, image, images, uh, and etc. Um, okay. All right. So uh, let's talk a bit about the threat landscape of Chrome extension malware. So at 2010, if we'll go uh, all the way back, we'll see that the Chrome Web Store. Uh, was live for the first time. Uh, a year later, we're talking uh, hundreds of millions of uh, downloads, and according to Google, 200 uh, million uh, active users. Uh, in the couple of years following, uh, there was a substantial uh, measures taken in order to uh, prevent attackers from uh, accessing uh, users' data. Uh, for example, we can, we uh, we have seen several measures taken by Google for uh, either if it's uh, scanning uh, each and every extension before uploading it to the web store or uh, stopping all options to uh, natively uh, or, uh, or secretly install extensions without using a developer mode. Also, uh, they canceled the style install. And uh, also, they discontinued, for example, the uh, Netscape plugin API, which was uh, basically allowed users to, uh, allowed the attackers to access the file system, and it was uh, deprecated. In 2015, they stopped it. 2014, they stopped it. A um, couple of years ago, obviously these measures have you know, um, caused a drop in uh, malware, uh, cruel malware distribution. However, uh, this couple, last couple of years, specifically uh, 2019, was the most, uh, uh, the biggest one. We saw uh, a big growth in the, the uh, propagation of uh, malware, uh, malware uh, from CRX files. And this is a graph from uh, virus tools. You can see that uh, only the first half. 2019, we're already past the uh, 2016, which was the uh, biggest year for uh, for Chrome malware. Also, uh, another interesting thing we've seen from Viostol is the uh, um, lack of uh, treatment into uh, false uh, to um, to malware to Chrome malware in uh, traditional AV vendors in Viostol. Most um, most extensions in Viostol are. Um, with zero detections. Um, uh, so let's talk a bit about the attack surface. Um, so first, um, all the JavaScript code runs in uh, isolated uh, environment, uh, sandbox uh, of uh, Chrome. Uh, so, for example, it cannot touch uh, or get uh, the memory of the machine or the file system uh, without like uh, having an exploit. Um, what it 
can actually still do is everything that uh, is related to the browser itself. For example, uh, stealing information or uh, credentials, um, um, forming uh, a botnet by uh, installing extensions on uh, different, uh, a lot of machines, um, uh, monetizing, like using advertisement and stuff like that. Uh, now we'll see uh, an example of uh, an attack the, that was presented in DEF CON and Black Hat two years ago. Uh, it was called the Game of Chromes. So basically what uh, the attack was about is to create uh, a botnet uh, based on a Chrome extension. Um, so uh, it was like that. Uh, the extension uh, was injected uh, an iframe to the Facebook uh, page of the user, like an invis invisible uh, iframe. And inside the iframe, uh, it, uh, it enters to, uh, it signed up to Wix and created uh, a website in Wix. Wix is a free platform to create a website uh, very fast. So using uh, the Wix website, uh, the Wix website was published to all the friends of the of the user, uh, and uh, by you entering to the link of the Wix webpage, other users uh, were installing uh, by clicking and installing uh, the extension. The extension was spread, uh, and uh, lastly, the extension uh, rated itself in a Chrome Web Store with five stars, which uh, just uh, genius. Um, so. That's one attack. Uh, another attack from the last month is DataSpy. DataSpy was spread with uh, eight extensions for Firefox and Chrome as well. Um, um, the extensions collected uh, uh, URLs and the hyperlinks and web pages uh, titles. Uh, and uh, from the, uh, all this data was uh, sent to a CNC server. And uh, the data was uh, actually is still uh, sold in uh, third party websites. Uh, you can see the research paper uh, and see the particular website where it's sold now. Um, why it's uh, interesting, for example, uh, in uh, URL, you, um, in HTTP uh, um, protocol, so there are uh, um, passed uh, a lot of data. Uh, tokens for file sharing is passed through URL. Uh, Zoom meeting uses tokens and stuff like that. Okay. All right, so we're going to talk a bit about the data collection and the labeling process. So basically when uh, sourcing uh, for data sets such as the CRX, uh, we had several challenges such as uh, finding reliable sources. This was a uh, highly uncommon and small and rather new threat landscape. Uh, other than that, we wanted to make sure that all files were actually uh, in their correct form and they're actually CRX files. And of course, uh, knowing how to distinguish between the malicious and the non-malicious ones. Uh, for that, we used three sources. Uh, one was the threat intelligence feed, for example, virus total, threat um, reversing labs. Uh, the other was the official Chrome web store. And last was unofficial Chrome stores, which are basically stores that uh, crawl the official store and offer the same uh, extensions. So we're going to talk a bit about each one. So uh, threat intelligence feeds had the lowest amount of, uh, of CRX files, um, but they had uh, much more uh, quality meta uh, metadata. For example, we had the AV vendors detections, we had the number of submissions, uh, when it was the first uploaded, et cetera. Uh, but also had some uh, more challenging metadata. Uh, we had, we faced a lot of uh, missing details. We couldn't find uh, a lot of uh, ways to uh, cross-reference between the Chrome Web Store and Virustool, for example. Uh, also, a lot of files were actually incorrectly tagged as CRX files. Uh, in fact, uh, something like 30% were, were invalid, even though they were tagged uh, as CRX files. However, in the Chrome Web Store, obviously it's the most reliable resource uh, to valid files, um, but um, they also remove malicious files, uh, at least the one they, they are aware of, and only, they only store the most recent uh, version of each, uh, of each extension. Um, so we, obviously we decided to refer to most files there as benign. And we, we did have find some metadata that was useful, but as I said, it's hard to cross-reference between them. 
Um, if we talk about the unofficial stores, so obviously this is the largest uh, source for Strix files because it stores all previous versions, all deleted, uh, all deleted uh, extensions, and uh, basically everything that was ever uploaded to uh, to the official store. Uh, but in some cases, we didn't have um, metadata to use, only an ID or not even that in some cases, and. Obviously, we do, we do not know uh, what happened to the CRX between the use store and the crawl, so uh, we're not sure what's the trust factor for, uh, for these uh, extensions, for these files. So just to sum it up real quick, um, so as we said, the threat intelligence feeds uh, were actually almost the best in, in everything except quantity. Uh, so what we did was use both the official Chrome Web Store and the unofficial stores um, together with the uh, with the feeds uh, and basically uploaded these files to uh, to get the results we wanted and the metadata that we thought would be necessary for our, for our grant truth so basically um, we decided to 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 use uh, five positives by AV vendors in order to uh, decide the files malicious as I said at the beginning um, we see that not a lot of vendors even scan these files, so five is not a lot of vendors, but it was enough for us, at least for this uh, research uh, model. And B9, we decided that uh, whether uh, files are in the official store and have zero positives after they were rescanned in virus tool or uploaded from the unofficial stores and also received zero positives. Uh, all right, so now we will dive into the three models that we created. Um, something important to say is that uh, this, this, tr this three models are our uh, research model. We just want to uh, prove a point that uh, we can, uh, it, it's possible to create a model to detect a malicious uh, Chrome extension with a good detection rate. Um, so this is a slide uh, about the overall uh, process uh, uh, of the creation of the model. So first is the pre-processing step. Uh, we validated the, the file that uh, were in introduced into the data set. After that, uh, we extracted from the relevant files the relevant, uh, like the features. Um, um, we ended up with a, a, a big dimensional uh, size, so we had to to reduce the dimensionality, to the, the dimensional. So we first used chi square, and after that we tried another model with uh, applying uh, two different uh, method, uh, like uh, with uh, two steps. First chi square, and then um, gradient boosting. Uh, we represented the the features into numerical value with using TFIDF in order to train a model. Uh, and the, the models that we trained were uh, one logistic regression model and two DNNs. Um, last thing to say about that is that uh, we, um, we didn't try to optimize the hyperparameters since, since it's just a research model, as, as I said. Sorry. All right. Um, so uh, the pre-processing. So first we validated the, the files, as I said. Uh, every deployed file should be CRX or zip. Uh, you can uh, check it uh, or test it by looking at the magic of the file, for example. Uh, another thing uh, to test is that uh, each archive uh, has a manifest uh, .json file, which is a must uh, for uh, any extension. Uh, we ended up with a uh, a bigger data set, but we used uh, 20,000 uh, 20, uh, files. 75 presents, uh, percent of the file uh, of the data sets of the data set, sorry, um, uh, went for uh, training and uh, 25 percent uh, for uh, test. All right, so uh, the feature extraction uh, method. Uh, we extracted feature from the JavaScript files and from the manifest. Uh, the feature extraction uh, method that we used uh, was uh, uh, looking for sequences of four characters or, uh, or more um, of alphanumeric values or uh, relevant uh, uh, characters to JavaScript such as underscore or dollar. Um, now we'll see an example. So let's say that uh, we're trying to uh, extract features uh, using this method uh, from this function. So these are the features that uh, 
will be extracted uh, using the features. Uh, I hope it's clear. All right, uh, the dimensionality reduction. So uh, using the extraction method that uh, we saw earlier, uh, we ended up with 1.1 million uh, features, which is uh, a big amount. Uh, of course, that we had to reduce the amount. So uh, as I said, uh, we tried chi-square to reduce to Actually, we try to uh, different uh, numbers. Uh, we we try to uh, we decided to take for this model the uh, 10k uh, features, and uh, in the second step uh, we use the gradient boosting to reduce from 10k to uh, um, to 1k, uh, and then we represented uh, the features into numerical value we are using uh, TFIDF as I said earlier. So uh, here are the results uh, of the three models. So first, uh, the DNN model uh, using chi-square only. Um, the results were best were the best results uh, out of the three models. Uh, as you can see, the recalls was 99 uh, percent, uh, and the false positive rate was about uh, two or three percent. Uh, the second DNN model using uh, another step of um, of XGBoost uh, was uh, was worse. Uh, the recall uh, was pretty similar, but uh, the false positive rate was much higher. Uh, the last uh, logistic regression model using uh, chi-square and XGBoost uh, had uh, the worst uh, worst results uh, out of these three. Uh, the false positive rate uh, was around uh, 30 percent, which makes it. Uh, it's not a sustainable model. Uh, one thing, uh, another thing to, uh, to, to note is that uh, in general the recall is uh, more important uh, for Chrome extension than the, the false positive rate since uh, an average user has around five or ten, uh, five or ten extensions and uh, you wouldn't want to like to miss the one malicious extensions uh, rather than uh, false positive on one of the uh, out of the ten, uh, which is um, not good as well, but uh, not uh, not bad as uh, missing the one malicious one. Um, um, Okay, and the last thing to say about this model that uh, all of these three models were uh, were able to detect uh, the data spy campaign and uh, the other one, the game of Chrome's future uh, research. Um, so uh, we would like to try the, to deobfuscate the JavaScript files before uh, extracting the features. Uh, so the extension uh, threat landscape suffer from uh, a lot of uh, obfuscations uh, on the JavaScript code. So we'd like to do some normalization and deobfuscation before we extract um, the features. Uh, another thing to try is uh, combine the data set to train a model with the combined data set of Chrome and Firefox extensions. Um, these these uh, formats and the uh, files uh, should be similar, uh, but we didn't try to train a combined uh, model uh, or tested uh, the results on Firefox uh, data set. And that's pretty much it. Uh, thank you very much. Um, actually, we are out of time, so we'll stay here. Uh, all right, one question, okay. Is there any question? All right, thank you very much.